What's up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got my full benchmark test of the HTC One M8. This video isn't really intended to compare with anything else, I will have those in a separate video. However, this is just to run raw benchmarks in which you guys can compare it to your own devices, deciding whether it is a worthy upgrade to the HTC M8. The 5 benchmarks I'll be running today are Anti2X, Geekbench 3, 3D Mark, Quadrant Standard, and also Sunspider. And although I know a lot of people out there will say that the benchmark scores don't exactly mean everything, I totally agree with that, and this is just pretty much to show you the raw hardware scores that these devices can get. The first benchmark we ran was Geekbench 3, a pretty standard benchmark that is used by a lot of people on both computers and mobile phones. It came out with a single core score of 922 and a multi-core score of 2552. For those who didn't know already, this is powered by a Snapdragon 801 processor that is clocked in at 2.3GHz with 2GB of RAM. So perhaps a device has higher amount of RAM would get a higher score, but you won't notice a real life performance difference. So that is where the theory of the performance scores or the benchmark scores don't mean everything lies true. The next benchmark we are going to move to is the N22X, and again, this is a hardware benchmark that tests overall CPU and GPU performance of the device, and there's also a ranking chart that shows all the other flagship phones on the market and the highest scores in general. So let's just flip over to that there. You can see there's the Note 3 sitting at the top in the 40,000s, a lot of flagships from last year sitting in the 30,000s. And here just taking a look at all the um, specifications and information about this device, let's just go ahead and run the test and once again I'll speed that up. So now that we're done the benchmark, you can see that the HEC1 did come out with a score of 28,774. And although that isn't the highest, you also have to keep in mind that this phone literally came out yesterday and a lot of these apps including Geekbench haven't really optimized um, in order to accommodate the specs of the device or the model. So it'll be interesting to see after the update when the device is officially identified. You can see right now it is known as the HTC 6525 LVW, what scores they will be receiving. The next benchmark we're going to move to is 3D Mark, which tests the graphics and GPU handling of this device. We're going to test it out in full resolution. There are other resolutions available, but we're going to test it at the unlimited. And what it does is it runs a sequence of videos that seem pretty high resolution and pretty much come up with a score in the frames per second and everything combined. And we got a score of about 20,000, which is pretty high, very impressive. And of course, you'd expect that out of a flagship smartphone with the flagship specs, CPU, and GPU of this device. So don't think this phone will have any problem running any high resolution games, graphic intensive games that are on the Play Store today. Before we move on to our browser test, we're going to run Quadrant Standard. Again, it does run 2D and 3D graphics and sees how your phone handles it in the frames per second. And we came up with a score in the 25,000s. You can see that their database of other devices that it compares to really hasn't been updated in a very long time. But you can go ahead and run this test on your device and see how it really compares to it. A score of 25,000 is actually pretty impressive. So next up we're going to run SunSpider, which is a JavaScript browser test that is used both on computers but also mobile devices. On the HTC M8, the default application or web browser is Google Chrome, which I think a lot of people will prefer. Um, it is obviously very fast and the score it came out with in SunSpider was 851 milliseconds and the lower the score the better. But I guess through all the tests, even the browser tests, you won't really notice any real world differences or anything drastic if you compare it to any other device. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be sure to leave a like if you did. From looking at the benchmark scores, I definitely feel that the scores that it came out with were exactly what I expected for a flagship caliber phone these days with top end specs. Also leave a comment down below of what devices you currently have and whether or not you're looking to upgrade to the HEC M8. I'll see you all in the next video.